if, if we end up a smear through the shale and nature concludes that intelligence is something never again to put into the hopper, then it will be an enormous tragedy because we didn't go down without a struggle. We have the technologies, the ideology, the uh, compassion for each other and caring world. We are not a lost cause yet, but we may end up a lost cause. And people then say, well, what should be done? You know, the Tolstoyan question, what then should be done? Well, I came up through the whole Berkeley thing in the 60s and all that, and I'm very wary of hortatory political prescriptions for what should be done. I mean, we saw that the best impulses in Marxism turn into the most horrifyingly regimented and totalitarian societies. Goodwill is not enough. So what is to be done? I think the answer to this is not only nothing, but considerably less than nothing. <laughs> And what I mean by that is that the real solutions to our problems lie in a series of negatives. Do not believe. Ideology has poisoned this planet. Ideology is bankrupt. It's a skin game. It's a shell game. It's only for Marx and Marx. It's it, it, it is beneath your dignity as a body to get mixed up in ideology. I mean, after all, where is it writ large that talking monkeys should understand the nature of being anyway? So belief is an incredible cop-out on intellectual uh, truth-seeking because belief precludes believing in its opposite. And so this is a, a self-limitation. You've become your own cop. And the ideologies of the 20th century are so shoddy and hobbled together or toxic to human values, they're not worth believing in anyway. So deconditioning ourselves from belief. Some people call it uh, cynicism. I call it good sense. I'm not a cynical person, but I know shit from Shinola, and I don't expect people who don't to get a lot of respect from the rest of us. I mean, what does it mean if you're an optimist and that means you can't uh, proclaim the difference between boot polish and excreta? It's ridiculous. Okay, don't believe. The, the next thing which comes out of that and is an even stronger prohibition don't follow. Following is a, is a tasteless position to find yourself in. Pets follow, vice presidents follow, and bad acts follow. So, you know, why follow? All of, all of these uh, gurus, geishas, roshis, and rishis are simply flim-flam artists. They've had thousands of years to get these cons together and run them on you. Believe me, I know, I'm a recovering Catholic. You have to fight your way free of belief and then do not follow. Do not follow. It's, a, it's an obsolete, tasteless thing and there's no human dignity in it whatsoever. Then a harder one, a more radical one, the one that might get me shot. Do not, in some profoundly metaphysical sense, consume. Do not consume for obvious reasons and then not so obvious reasons. The obvious reasons are that the fetish for objects made of matter is wrecking the planet. If everybody on Earth had what the people in the front row here have, there wouldn't be enough metal, glass, plastic and petroleum in the planet to provide that kind of lifestyle to the billions of people who now aspire it. None of this stuff brings happiness anyway. 
I recently had the experience of having my 75 Ford uh, Granada blow up on me in the middle of the night. And so uh, I had to buy a new car. So I, I went down a year and up a brand, and I got a 74 BMW, and it cost me two grand. And I guarantee you, once you have the little thing on the steering wheel, the quaternity sign, you don't need the $90,000 model. What we should all do is buy antiques. Don't consume anything which hasn't already been made. It's a lot of shit that's been made. It's all over the place. I see it in Manhattan going for a bundle. Uh, if, if we... What we need to do, you see, is retool our values so that what is new is odious, tasteless, déclassé, uh, embarrassing, and not to be found in the better home. Uh, the older things are, the better they are. Here's a 50-year-old chair, fine. Here's a 500-year-old chair, how much better? Uh, we need to cease to consume, and I'm somewhat uh, facetious in suggesting that we all become aficionados of uh, Chippendale furniture and that sort of thing. That isn't the plan either. But the endless fetishism for consumer objects is wrecking the planet. And then finally, well no, not finally, um, there's one after this, but another negative, and this is a slightly more difficult to follow, requires a little uh, cogitation. It's insidious. We shouldn't watch. We shouldn't watch. Watching is some kind of uh, voyeuristic, sadomasochistic peculiarity that we are permitting ourselves because we think there are too many of us to do. But I don't think this is true. I think watching is an incredibly disempowering thing. Uh, millions of people live half-awake, larval lives watching six and a half hours of TV a day. And as long as they stay in their homes, uh, you know, shopping by phone and fax, everybody is happy. But they participate not at all in the society. They're the marks and they consume. They consume the media, the entertainment, the clothes, the styles, the brands. They are the morons who are keeping this system running. And I assume that largely the people here tonight are not. We're the people who grind out all this stuff. I mean, I feel I do this. I write books. I produce ideas. They are grist for the marketplace. Harper and Bantam don't care what I'm saying. What they care about is how the books are selling. You know, product number 3245A sub F. How is it doing in the marketplace? Do not watch, because when you're watching, you're not at the center of things. Largely, what I'm talking about here is reclaiming experience. Reclaiming experience. This is what's been taken from us. This is why the new music and dance culture is so important. This is why drug culture is so important. This is why the celebration of sexual minorities is so important. This is all about coming to grips with who you really are and how you really feel and then experiencing it. You know, you are not owned. It is not he or she or them or it that you belong to. Uh, and we have been told that we have to fit in. We have to make sense. This is not true. We are creating a world that celebrates diversity, that celebrates the uniqueness of every person. The complexification of our species is a process directly dependent on the complexity that we each bring to the process. The diversity that is spreading through society is a concomitant to the boundary dissolution. And I really believe 
that uh, that science's inability to make sense of human beings in the world as part of nature, to make sense of art, love, hate, aspiration, fear. The failure to make sense of this is the failure to come to terms with the transcendental aspect of reality. We are the best evidence there is that something extraordinarily unusual is happening on this planet and that it's not something which will go on for millions of years. It began about 20,000 years ago. It's a self-advancing, uh, self-expanding, self-defining process and it takes no prisoners. You know, there, there is no going back. There is no going back from the momentum that history has imparted to the human imagination. There is only a going forward into what is called a forward escape through art, through design, through management and integration. We have to push the art pedal to the floor. We have never designed our societies. We have never managed our societies or our lives we have never tried to make what we were serve an aesthetic agenda. And that's why we've created a mess. In the absence of an aesthetic agenda, what we've created is uh, Animal House on a global scale. So now it's time to pay the piper. And uh, just in closing, the catalyst now is a combination of technologies solid-state technologies, and pharmacology. The world that we are leaving behind, the world that failed us, was a world of ideologies and mechanical technologies. And the ideologies, one by one, are going down the tubes. Marxism, Freudianism, uh, Fascism, they one by one will be discredited. They cannot sustain. And the mechanical technologies cannot be sustained. They pollute, they dehumanize, they wreck the planet. What is coming into place is a world where drugs replace ideology. That's why drugs are so terrifying to those who oppose them. That's why they say you want to escape you want to take drugs to escape. That's right. You want to escape. You want to escape fascism, communism, socialism, existentialism, phenomenology, positivism, all of this stuff. You want to escape ideology into the felt presence of the body, which means drugs and sex and syncopated music. And... And parallel to this development and happening in different sectors of society is the hardwiring of our imaginations, the building of databases that we can access instantaneously that make the human past co-present with the now. The boundary dissolution that I'm talking about includes the division between past, present, and future. This is what it means to end Newtonian time. It means that the past, the present, and the future become a coextensive domain where everyone then awakens to the fact, which was always there to be observed, that there is not simply one past. There is nothing called the past. I have a past. You have a past. It's not the same past. Consequently, the futures we are going to are different. We create our own realities as a species and as an individual. And so what we are passing through here in the now, in this lecture, in the 20th century, is a, a, a moment of, of community, a gam, as Melville would say. Say. A gam is where two sailing ships, two whaling ships meet at sea. That's what we have here, a gam, a moment of dialogue. 
and then we will each go back to our own uh, private Idahos. 